that's the fermentation station. I've got uh, all my batches of hot sauce going right now along with the cider ferments, first time for cider. And uh, this year the theme for the chilies turns out to be hatch. There's a lot of hatch chilies in there. Uh, mostly because I was able to get them and they're, and they're not the extremely hot hatch chilies. They are just a hot variety. I do have some that were um, the extra hot that are made into a sauce, but it's not a, it's not really fermenting. Uh, it's more, it's more just a vinegar based solution and it's sitting in there. It's fermenting a little bit, but it's barely, barely happening. So I'm not really counting that. Um, anyway, uh, first batch. Oh, I'm going to show you what happened with the first batch. So I just wanted to give you a little update on the hot sauce this year. This is the first ferment that I'm doing. And this is a mash that I put in, let's see, today's the sixth and I put this in. So this is day five of the ferment. Actually day four, because, well no, let, let's go day five. Um, and this was put into a vacuum bag and sealed up. And she's getting a little puffy. <laughs> That is a really good sign that the fermentation is active. This is kind of firm. I think tomorrow I might have to bleed it. But uh, yeah, this is all CO2 generated by the uh, by the fermentation process. So this is this is rather nice. So this is a brine-free process. Um, there's no water added to it. It's just the uh, pepper mash and whatever else is in there. I've got some spices and some garlic and things. And then sealed in a vacuum bag with uh, the appropriate amount of salt. I'm going with a 3.5% salt mixture by weight. Um, it's the only way to do it. And uh, I think it's going to taste pretty good. This is primarily hatch pepper, but it's got some habaneros and a few other things in there. So uh, I think it'll end up being pretty good. I will probably have another batch coming up. Um, I've got enough peppers to start another one. I don't have enough to finish it yet, so uh, I might wait a little bit, but uh, I'm thinking that this is probably going to be pretty good. I'm hoping. So you remember how I said I had to, uh, I was going to need to burp it the next day, I burped the bag? Well, overnight it blew out on me. So I was able to, I had it in the container, so I was able to salvage it uh, and then load it into the jars and let it go. By the time that it got to that point, it was really, really watery and I wasn't going to be able to put it back in a vacuum bag. Uh, if this works, I'm probably going to stop the vacuum bag process. Maybe. I don't know. There are times when it's really good, particularly with, you know, if I want to freeze the mesh. Um, that works out pretty well. But for now, I'm going with the jars. We'll see how that goes. I'd like to get a process that works. So I'm going to make a batch of hot sauce today, or at least start the ferment for one. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of hatch peppers and some serranos. I've got onion, dill, garlic, and I've got um, cumin and coriander that I'm going to use for spices. Uh, there's also salt that gets added, but that's part of the curing process, or part of the, uh, you know, the setup process. But the first thing I need to do is I'm gonna chop these up into smaller pieces so that I can feed them to the food processor. And here's the uh, food processor. It's a little on the, the old side, but it still works. Um, got the serranos and the dill in there, onions and that stuff. Now this is, I've pre-weighed all of this so I know how much is going into it. Uh, I want to do that because I'm going to be adding salt by weight as part of the curing process, because I need to have the salinity up above 3%, I'm shooting for probably 35 to 4%. So I'll add that toward the very end. All right, that is everything mashed down. I've got all the spices added in here. The thing I don't have added is salt. And the reason I did that is because I needed to weigh this. And what I came up with is 2,487 grams of mash 
and at a 3.5% solution that comes out to 87 grams of salt. That is 88 grams. I went a little tiny bit over, but that's not going to matter. That is the mash, all in the nice jars. Now I'm using regular mason jars with the, uh, the wide mouth. Now normally I would not recommend this because there is oxygen in here and exposure to oxygen to that top surface can cause some issues. But I have this handy little gadget which goes over the top and it sucks out the air. I don't think it does it completely. I haven't done a measurement of the uh, oxygen removal, but uh, this will do a good job of keeping it from growing some nasty bacteria on it. And um, it will give it time to start generating the CO2. And when the CO2 equalizes to atmospheric pressure, the lid will loosen. And at that time I can put on a regular airlock lid but for right now this works very well and you can see it's actually pulling out air from the uh, from the mash at the time because there was a lot of air that got put in during that um, food processing step so you can see that this one has got the vacuum seal this one does not another interesting thing as you can see that there's a level change <laughs> that's the air that's trapped in here that's pushing this up that's why I don't want to fill it up too high because as this progresses and the, the co2 starts bubbling this will start floating up I'm gonna pull this one now and there you can see they're both up to almost exactly the same level that was actually a pretty good pour <clears throat> now these are going to go sit in my uh, on the fermentation table and I will get some fermentation lids and those lids will probably be off the next day or the next couple days anyway as this starts to kick in. This also has an adapter for the uh, the regular jars as well. It just comes apart, just unscrews. So I'm really quite happy with this. I have another batch to uh, process. This one's a little bit different. This is going to be uh, primarily habanero along with some orange bells, carrots, and some other sweet bell peppers. I'm going to add some turmeric this time. I'll probably still add the coriander because I'm wanting to go for a fruitier, fruitier flavor sauce because the habaneros have a very fruity flavor in them uh, along with the heat, but you know. I also did a quick taste of this before uh, uh, putting it in and it's got a decent heat profile uh, it will mellow out as it as it uh, ferments and ages the uh, but that there's a nice heat kick right in the beginning it's very spiky right now because it's still just fresh um, but the heat isn't overwhelming and it's got a nice little flavor to it I want to I'm Kind of curious to see what this is going to turn out to be. I haven't really used hatched chilies before in making a hot sauce. So we'll see how that goes. I also saved a bunch of seeds from the hatch chilies. Uh, these are the ones that just completely fell out. I wasn't too, uh, too awful worried about it because I, I already have a bunch of seeds from hatch and uh, I'm just trying to, it, you know, not going to let them go to waste. I'll uh, take these and let them dry and then I'll put them in an envelope. I overheated the food processor. Uh, it's not designed for this kind of volume. Uh, that's what I've got for the second batch so far. I still have that left to go. And then the final salt. But uh, this is a habanero based one and it's it uh, it's got a good flavor profile just initially, so I think this one is promising. And there we have the last three. I made enough for three. <laughs> um, this is probably the last batch I'm going to ferment this year. Um, I mean, I've got I've got three batches going on, and it's all hatch. I mean, they're, they're all kind of based around hatch chili, so I guess it's the year of the hatch. 
uh, but you know, there, uh, I'm looking forward to it. These will probably sit until next summer and, uh, then we can open them up and go to the secondary, uh, the, the flavoring and everything else. But, uh, I am kind of looking forward to this one. So I guess I hadn't really thought about doing, making hot sauce this year and with all the stuff that's been going on, but it just kind of came up as part of the, the fall, uh, fall celebration time, haunting season. Um, and I'm kind of glad that I did it because it, it feels homey again. I need to get some better tools so that food processor is, uh, that is not designed to handle this kind of load. Um, I do have or had one down in Minneapolis. I don't know the state of it at this point, whether it's, uh, whether it's salvageable or not, but we'll find out. Um, also for the vacuum stage of this, what I would really kind of prefer to do is to put them in a vacuum chamber and pull it with a, with a real vacuum pump and then let it sit for a while to degas. Uh, I might have to try that. I wonder if I can do that with the rings. Just put the, it might actually work. Uh, someday when I get a new vacuum pump and all that fun jazz, we can maybe try it. But spices, uh, going heavy with uh, coriander and not coriander, um, cardamom and cumin this year. Uh, I I like those flavors going into a lot of the, the peppers, the, the flavor profile kind of fits with me and I think it might be sort of becoming a signature for me. Either that or it's a, a, a path to uh, path to becoming in a rut. But you know, I, I want to make good hot sauce. I want to make tasty hot sauce. So I don't know, I guess that's going to be it. Um, see you guys next week. <laughs>